A very hearty welcome to all of you. Here we are about to discuss basics of electronics. Actually, I would like to start with all the concepts which are of very important aspect and have the description in a brief manner. Very first, I have to give the introduction of the electronics. We have to know what is the difference or what is the definition of electronics. It's actually an area of physics and technology involved with the construction of circuits, which are completely based upon the important components such as transistors, chips, microchips, and also they involve with respect to the behavior and how the transit of electrons is carried out in a semiconductor or conductor or vacuum or a gas. This is the definition of electronics. The purpose of this particular video is actually to make the viewer introduced to the fundamentals of electronic circuitry. Let us think that there is no prior knowledge to anyone of what is meant by electronics or electricity or any type of circuits. Here, this video helps as a supporting element. Now, what exactly is referred as an electronic circuit? Actually, the circuits are referred as the devices which uses electrical currents to complete the important tasks or important task sequences that are going to be done. The word here, circuit, indicates the construction is a closed type of structure, means it is a closed loop. It is not an open condition. However, somebody asks what is meant by electric current. Now here, current refers to the flow of charge which is commonly referred as the charge because of the form that in general, nobody knows what is meant by charge actually. It is same as that no one understands what gravity is. To describe, we should understand how they are used in the real world. Now, the idea here is that it equals to force, like Coulomb's unit of charge measurement is most commonly used. It is mainly because of, it is named after the French physicist or aristocrat or inventor known as Charles Augustine Coulomb, he, the period during the Voltaire and Rousseau, the Coulomb lived there. And even during the scientific developments, there were so many political instabilities, even though there are revolutionary ideas. But Coulomb's construction has been given a boost to the work and to avoid the political instability in France, he left the France. Now we call the charge as two types. One is positive charge, one more is negative charge. In other words, the charge is not so possible to make or regulate. However, it is possible to counteract it. Now, everyone, the researchers who have come in the literature review, they discovered that equal amounts of positive and negative charge are to an object. The object exhibited no electrical force or response. In other words, it had no amount of net charge. This is about introduction of electronics. Let us move to the next important point, where is the elements of electronic circuits. That is, very first component is resistors. Let us discuss about an example, how we have to discuss this resistor. We take an analogous example for this one. 
just like water pipes and how they have their own connectors how water is even though it is flowing through the pipelines we have the valves they work as the resistors similar to the so called water pipe water valves examples resistors are of poor conductors of current means they reduce the fastest fastness of the flow of the charge now in general the representation of resistance values of resistor is given by the greek letter omega the simplest and most often used is we say that resistor even the resistor's primary function is to impede the flow of current they have a wide range of applications now even if we know that there are various number of ways we can manufacture a resistor some of them are type of pile of wire made from a non conductive substance while others are more complex a voltage can be present even to down using a resistors or the quantity of current that can flow can be limited using resistors this is how the resistors come into work moving towards the types of resistors in the resistors itself we have the resistors can be changed by using the potentiometer the potentiometers are types of resistors which typically contain c terminals a common standard terminal one that increases in the resistors and one in one direction spun and another one is decrease the resistance when the shaft is turned in the other way <coughs> the resistance of coming to the next one thermistor for example changes with respect to temperature temperature can be measured with the thermistors the moving towards ohms law actually the significance of ohms law is very important in electronic circuits elements it describes the relationship between voltage current and resistance and it has the most used equation which is given by v equals to ir now coming to smallest battery and resistor nearly every circuit is more complex moving to the next set of elements of capacitors now in circuits of electronic range capacitors are mainly useful for regulation of the flow of the current that is electricity it acts as a miniature battery they actually give get their name from their ability to hold the charge the primary function of any capacitor is the purpose of storing the electricity a capacitor can be compared to a rechargeable battery in many aspects or in many definitions two most often utilized electrical components are resistors and capacitors even though many big metals are separated by air conditioning you can see the pictures there capacitors in reality they are made from metal foils now energy stored in a capacitor can be quantified in terms of farads which is the units of capacitance if any non electrical engineer tries to study this concept of capacitors who is working on electronic device this particular concept is very helpful for you so moving towards the next concept inductors now it is after resistor and capacitor the most used component is referred as the inductor now typically inductor is a coil of wire with a large number of windings wound around a magnetic core such as iron type of metal is used now a coil of wire is all it takes to make an inductor which is why they are also known as coils c o i l s coils and capacitor stores this energy in electrically whereas inductor store the energy in 
automatically. Means electrical energy in inductor also is stored just like capacitor, but in the form of magnetic range. Now, rather than electric force, the properties of inductors actually originate from a different kind of force than we discuss in simple terms. Now, let us move from this point. The voltage across the capacitor is equal to the current in the inductor. That has to be noticed while going through the experiments we are doing with the capacitors, resistors, and inductors. Now, the passive electrical components include resistors, capacitors, inductors. Aside from resistors and capacitors, inductors are said to be a rare component which are used. Contrary to a capacitor, the impedance of an inductor changes as a function of frequency rather than the way around. The DC signals to look to an inductor to be closed, but high frequency oscillator signals appear to be open in this type of inductors. This is how we understand the three main elements of the electronics. We will continue this video with a few more topics. Here we discussed about resistors, capacitors, inductors. Now we will go ahead with the next stage referred as semiconductor devices. After that, we will go with the electronic bench circuits in the same video. In continuation to the previous topic in basic electronics, now here we are continuing the concept of semiconductors as a part of uh, basic electronics. Very first of all, let us know what is meant by semiconductor. It is actually a material which is like lying in between the conductor and insulator. It has its threshold value in between conductor and insulator. And the most used material in the semiconductors manufacturing is mostly is silicon. Now, by the, may, by the usage of semiconductor materials, it's highly possible for us to construct different electrical circuits and the devices which can uh, either act as a conductor or insulator, sometimes both, or sometimes like a part of a switch, or sometimes like some operations. They are mainly used. Most of the basic semiconductor devices are diodes and transistor, transistors. Let us go one by one with their showing their symbols and how they operate. Very first is the diode. Now, actually a diode is a type of semiconductor device which it follows or it allows the current to flow only in one direction. Let us see the picture, how it looks like, its symbol. Let us say for instance, we need to convert uh, an AC current, that is alternating current, uh, which changes the direction of current flow to a DC. Means to direct current, we can prefer to go for diode as it allows the current to flow in one direction. Other than these diodes, we have different types of special type of diodes. One of them is which is very well known to each and everyone is LED, light emitting diode, which is very common nowadays in usage. In LED, as we see the electrical current tends to pass through the diode, it emits photons of light. This is more time sufficient than the normal incandescent light. That's why nowadays most of the light projecting devices utilize LEDs as their components such that they have more efficiency in the production of light. Now, this is about the diodes. And in the, in, the, in the same words, that is uh, current possible semiconductor diode, they tend to emit the photons of light. 
this is more efficient and because of this uh, one the diodes are more preferred for the purpose of conversion from ac to <coughs> dc next one transistor actually as the advancements happened in the semiconductor devices in the previous century transistor is the very innovative thing that have been happened because these are the fundamental components that are used in any type of machine let it be computer or anything in other simple words the transistor is simply called as electrical switch let us see how it looks like in digital applications we can have in uh, transistors can work either like a zero or one put uh, when you have these switches they can store data and perform even the calculation now coming to the modern day uh, processors mainly called as microprocessors or microcontrollers they need billions of transistor switches to do the operations this can be modified in the integrated circuit concepts to make our works smarter and easier now transistors can also be used in most of the analog applications where we can rather than simply control how much current it is going to be passed through them for example a transistor in analog applications mainly used for the purpose of amplification of a signal uh, the best examples are in analog devices or analog circuits is the amplifiers what we might have studied in basic transistor connections there is c amplifier cc amplifier like that we can we might have studied in our basics if not please go through them once moving from here we are going towards one more important concept in the basic electronics referred as integrated circuits or ic's shortly commonly these uh, ic's are referred as microchip or simply they can be called as a chip even though transistors are the main building blocks for any type of design of a computer but the integrated circuit invention has made a big change that instead of having billions of bill transistors to form a circuit we can easily use one integrated circuit which is programmable and we can dump all the operations that are going to be done by media billions of transistors in simple sets means an integrated circuit can be considered as a single piece of semiconductor material but again i am repeating this one single piece of semiconductor material which is mainly the main main material here is silicon here it holds various electrical components such as transistors diodes resistors and capacitors on a small minute type of structure instead of circuit made up of discrete components like all the components we can have the ic components ic incorporates all the components together which makes the work for allowing the signals between the components to travel very faster without losing any power uh, let us say the biggest uh thing happened here is the texas instruments is the company which has helped here uh, if you remember the name jack kilby was a person who invented the transistor which has made a world changing we can say a world changing technology has evolved by means of this ics that is integrated circuits many years ago and he was referred to as a texas instrumentation company engineer 
as per the history very first next one is transformer a transformer it, it contains two or more inductor coils in this one the energy which is generated is transferred from one coil to the another via magnetic field and symbol is as a said sentence energy is transferred from one coil to the other coil let us see how the symbol will look like see the two coils represented here from one to the another it is transferred via magnetic field there we can see the two lines the most common use of the transformers is to but mainly for the purpose of step up or step down the voltage levels and transformers are most commonly used in the conversions the converters that is ac to dc converters now let me give a small definition here of transformer it is a device which transfers electrical energy from one alternating circuit, current circuit to the another more circuits either by stepping up the values or either reducing increasing or reducing stepping up means increasing that uh, stepping down means reducing the voltage now we can say that when doing the de design process either we can design it as step up or step down that's why in even in the general usage we are having step up transformer step down transformer and these transformers works on the magnetic induction principle when voltage is induced in one coil called the primary coil it magnetizes the iron core this is how the transformers are more useful in the electronics next concept is the regulator we can say what is the regulator or any electrical or a device it is a device which maintains the voltage of power sources within the acceptable limits within the acceptable limits it stores them now coming to other words a regulator is a circuit that regulates a voltage means as i said earlier it controls the voltage similarly regulates the voltage now as an example if we have like a temperature voltage is vary from 6 to 20 we can use a regulator to produce a constant that is some 5 volts values dc output also now coming to the types of regulators which are available and usage very first one is linear regulator or this serial regulator is the most easiest type of understandable regulator when compared to the next uh, other regulators a linear regulator uses a transistor like type of facet to control how much current is transferred to the output and thereby this will help us to control or regulate the voltage at the output levels now the main uh, advantages of this type of linear regulators is that they are they comes as a cost effective things and very easier to utilization and they have even nice free circuits available within them now the main limitation here is in most of in some of the applications this regulators this linear regulators tends to waste some sort of power which is dissipated in the form of a heat module next one switching regulator compared to the linear regulators these are more complex switching regulators are more complex which require more components whereas in the linear regulator we have small components requirement here switching regulator we need more components to produce more electrical noise and 
one more limitation is that they are not cost effective as of linear regulators now the what is the main purpose of having switching regulators in our usage when we are having linear is that they when compared to linear regulators they waste power means the power loss is very less in most applications and they work like boosters to the low air voltage supplies to a higher supply voltage act as a booster switching regulators means for example let us say we are powered by something around uh, uh value of 4 volts but a component requires a uh, 2 volt voltage supply this type of switching regulators will help us such that we can have uh, like 3 uh, or 4 of them in a stack and this type we can make 12 voltage more than 12 voltage supply and we can regulate it down to 12 volts also means in some of the bad some of the daily usage uh, Uh, remote controls also uh, sometimes need a um, more number of bunch of uh, batteries like 2 3 4 like that even we can have a stack of them in line to make that work easier okay now coming to few more points switching regulators use inductors and capacitors mainly for the purpose of storage and releasing of the energy Mm, this is happened at a particular intervals of time we can say at a certain rate it happens that is either storage or release now we have a peculiar word named as a duty rate means which is of uh, calculated for time versus off time on time versus off time duty rate these switching regulators are easily able to control or regulate the output voltage now this is how we can say switching regulators are advantageous than the <coughs> linear regulators now means a linear regulator may waste over half of the power that goes into it whereas switching regulator may only waste a few percentage of the power applied in this way switching regulators even though they are not cost effective as they uh, what to call uh, the power loss is very less in the switching regulators this is how we can discuss about the regulators before going uh, before we go into some more advanced concepts of electronics uh, now we will move towards the basic units of the active passive as well as active components what we discussed just now their units their measurements how they are going to be useful for us we are going to see now in the next slide i said earlier we are moving towards basic units of various passive active and other components along with the units we are going to have the definitions for those units and the keywords that are used in the electronics very first is the direct current it is referred as the flow of electrons only in one direction and the flow of current is from the negative to the positive terminal although we say that the convenience is uh, positive to negative is very good but keep it in mind the current flow is from negative to positive here sometimes direct current is also referred as conventional current as opposite to the normal electron flow next one is the alternating current which is made well known in the world of electrical and electronic engineering is ac the electrons flow in both directions in a cyclic manner here means in one way 
first then in another way just like a sinusoidal waveform here what are the changes happens that determines the frequency measured in hz the cycles per second in alternate current going towards frequency a very well known parameter which we measure in most of the experiments which are there in the electronic devices and circuits now the units of frequency is as known h h e r d z which is named after the physician h its symbol is represented as head z old symbol earlier before having the head naming it head it was earlier in this it was called as cps that is cycles per second a complete cycle is computed whenever the so called ac signal has transmitted from zero to the extreme values and once again to zero to zero and once again opposite like that it has to go from the topmost to the zero to the topmost pair in on the uh, graphical plot and from the top topmost towards the crossing the zero line once again it has to repeat from zero to negative and like that it has to repeat that's how the frequency is calculated for one cycle and coming to the applications the audible range all of us know that 20 hz to 20000 hz next one is a voltage very well known as the volts v o l t s and the symbol most of the times referred as capital v earlier before voltage they used to call it as supply voltage was called as supply that's why that the, that the representation was with respect to the battery symbol that is e earlier now voltage can be said as the pressure of electricity or electromotive force in other words this is about voltage going towards another more important factor in basic units of electronics is the current the units of current is amps or amperes the symbol is represented as capital i now here the current means it is a flow of the electrons means electrons are moving having in wing if there is no current simply you can say that battery has been not charged unless we connect a load to it now the magnitude of current actually is computed with the help of what is the available voltage there and what is the resistance that has been given or some other, some other most of the or uh, some other times they use impedance in place of resistance of the load and the power source now current can be in two forms once again ac or dc positive or negative depending upon the reference it changes from positive to negative negative to positive this is how this current works for electrons current sometimes it is measured is also most of the times in the problems daily days we use it in the form of milliamps also that is 1000 milliamp is equals to 1 ampere it is very well known fact everyone there are some nanoamps also sometimes used in some of the peculiar problem solving and application oriented things we use this nanoampere also now from current the next parameter is resistance we have discussed about resistance in the previous slides now the resistance the unit of resistance is ohms our symbol is given by capital r now it is a measure of how it is uh, opposing the flow of current through the device sometimes it is measured as how easily or how difficultly it is allowing the electrons to flow now in terms of the materials available copper is referred to has very low resistance now likewise sometimes 
the plastic insulation type of material when you do it it is we having high amount of resistance and it also prevents uh, the flow of current from one wire to the another wire now going from resistance we have capacitance as the parameter next unit the unit is farads and the simple is represented by capital c and mainly these capacitors are preferred to store charge unlike a battery capacitor stores a charge in the terms of electrostatic nature rather than chemical nature and because of electrostatic nature here these capacitance values uh, will react very very faster than the other components now when it comes to capacitor it will easily stands for the test of ac but will not pass the dc at least for the practical reasons also whereas the reactance of ac resistance is also called as impedance next one inductance the symbol which is it is denoted by capital h in some of the textbooks in capital l in some of the textbooks and the units of inductance is henry's now inductance is going to occur in the conducting material but it is like in the form of wounds like in the form of wound into a coil now the inductor stores charge magnetically whereas capacitors which to store them electrically and this inductor presents a low impedance to dc low impedance to dc now uh, when compared in in a tail like this in uh, electrical up electrical it is the electrical opposite of capacitor inductor which is the electrical uh, opposite of the capacitor inductance is always a positive value keep it in mind inductance cannot be a negative value whereas capacitors can be negative or positive depending upon the charge charging the, the battery of the charge or discharge now moving from inductance we are going towards one more parameter very famous known as impedance the impedance sometimes represented by ohms itself or z capital z unlike resistance this impedance is depending upon the frequency means the frequency dependent parameter and is mainly for the purpose of ac signals now we can say impedance is made up of combination of three things here resistance capacitance and our inductance means we can take the combination of resistor or capacitor or resistor or inductor like that we can prepare and we can identify what is the impedance of the particular circuitry next one is the decibels now unit for this one is bells decibels or db because this is very large the symbol sometimes in the books in the units are represented by d b the decibels are used in audios that is a speech system or speaker systems because they are larger than measure of voltage current or power and correspond well to the response of the ear means it is like a speech means we have studied about a particular concept called three decibels in most of the uh, electronics laboratories we have done this one that is three decibel change now this is referred as half of the double power means when you take this pi value it is like 0.707 values times voltage or current respectively this is about basic units and the definitions going from this concept now we are going towards microcontroller unit now for most of the modern day technologies and products available this microcontroller unit 
is very most important because it acts or works as a brain for the product. What is the product is there? Microcontroller works as a brain unit. Means it tries to understand what is happening with the particular component. Now a microcontroller mainly consists of a central processing unit, a memory, and several peripherals. All of them are going to be integrated on a simple and single chip. Now even though the developments have happened, still these changes require more patience while doing this. And next coming towards the microcontrollers, they work very best at interfacing with the external world by by the means of the switches, by the means of lights, by the means of the most important component called transducers, which is used for changing from one form to the other form energy, relays, motors, etc. Motors means with the most useful experiment which has to be seen in the VTEC days is the engineering days is the now moving from that is engineering days is stepper motor, whereas the microprocess they tend to process massive amount of data. Now, most of the times, nowadays, Arduino is most used as a microcontroller unit by the company Atman. It was an 8-bit microcontroller, MC microcontroller. But for more advanced applications where we need fast processing, fast processing speed and more memory, a 32 bit microcontroller also used other than normal other than the normal 8051. The most popular are based on the ARM Cortex M architecture. Going from microcontroller, we are going towards microprocessor. Actually, a microprocessor is most useful in the applications which require fast processing of large amounts of data. It is a, a fundamental level microprocessor is no at, not at all any difference from the previous concept called microcontroller unit. Here, unlike microcontroller, where both processing unit and memory are integrated on the same chip, here in microprocessor they has to be available in the separate modules. This gives us the flexibility to incorporate as much memory required in the microprocessors and these microprocessors run on the operating systems such as Linux, Windows, etc. Now this is the biggest difference between the microcontroller and microprocessor. Now on the other hand microcontroller simply executes the firmware code means the source code and it does not depend upon any operating system whereas microprocessor depends upon the operating systems either it be linux android windows Macintosh. it would be any type of uh, unit next from this concept of uh, microprocessor we will move towards next topic as a flow now in the next slide we are moving towards the next important concepts the next coming uh, continuing from the topic of where we left from micro circuit sorry micro circuits like microcontroller and microprocess the next important concept is circuit Actually, a circuit in electronics is referred as a circular path of conductors which, in which there is a flow of current. And there are two types of circuits. Very first among them is the closed circuit. It is just like a, it looks like a circle where it starts and ends at the same point. This is just a closed circuit, means it forms a complete type of 
loop into itself that is about uh, this so called uh, uh, circuit diagram about closed circuit whereas coming to some more discussion here before going to open circuit now the closed circuit allows the electricity from the positive polarity of power to the ground that is which is uh, which we call as uh, negative in uninterrupted mode similarly moving from closed circuit if it does not start from one uh, one place to the another place that is uh, uh, in contrast to closed circuit if there is any sort of breaking point in the loop and that loop is not in a closed one then the type of circuit is referred as open circuit now depending upon which type of loop it is whether it is in closed loop or open loop we can call it as a closed circuit or open circuit similarly all the circuits whatever we frame basically they have three important uh, fundamental components to be referred as voltage source its conductive path what are the path it is going to take conductive path and a load resistor into it a load is available there in the circuit these points are to be kept in mind the voltage source sometimes most times is a battery in order to make the current to flow in the circuit and the path what i said is mainly for providing the route for the flow of that electricity and finally the load is required to assess how much load that consumes the power like that we cal we prepare a circuit whether it is a closed circuit or open circuit from circuit we are moving towards schematic diagram actually along with the circuit diagrams we have one more thing called a schematic diagram which uses symbols as an analogous to the components what have been used in the circuit now these symbols are in the form of a graphical representations in other words i can say schematic diagram is simply a conceptual one a conceptual engine drawing which demonstrates how all the electronic components are linked together now most of the times the components are represented using the symbols here throughout the circuit diagram coming to the next point it will help us to know which component in the entire schematic diagram of connections is to be used or wish to connect or wish to put aside and these schematic diagrams will be very helpful for the beginners who started to understand what is meant by electronics engineering moving from this part next one is printed circuit board the concept now generally very fair, known as pcb whereas the previous one a schematic diagram is only referred as an abstract diagram of the entire project electron project we are doing but in making it a real world design we require the pcbs means the real world design must be converted into form of a pcb pcb layout we use some different type of softwares depending upon the specifications of the system depending upon the application system we use particular softwares to make the so called pcb active let us look the pcb looks like this a small prototype model how it looks like actually a breadboard is also referred as a prototype board that allows you us to explain how quickly 
the things happen. Now moving to breadboard. Breadboard is typically a prototyping board which allows us to understand what is happening in the entire connection given by the schematic diagram. Now it allows us to understand quickly and easily how we can connect various electronic components even having some integrated circuits inbuilt into them. You can look at the picture there, the circuit that uh, so-called uh, breadboard. It is having dotted lines in, virgin, in uh, uh, horizontal as well as vertical columns. And it, as it shows this so-called breadboard is useful to form a temporary circuit and it does not need any soldering most of the times and components or wires, wires whatever we take or patch cards we can simply look at the holes there we can fix into that one the component ends to form a temporary circuit as it is not a permanent one as i said it is a temporary we can do experiment on the same board and make changes until we get the required output is arrived at. And this so-called middle rows in between the numbers given in the screen there, they work, they run in vertical direction, while the exterior means exterior ends like plus or plus minus symbols are available on the screen there. Those are expected to connect in a horizontal position. Okay, this is how you board board is, uh, breadboard is useful. And we will move to the one more, comp uh, one more main circuitry other than regulators, what I discussed it, uh, in the uh, middle of this uh, so called uh, basic electronics. Now, very first of the converters is unlock to digital convert. Now, whatever the signals what we see in the daily life, most of them are in analogous forms. Means we require computers or any other circuits to make the unlock information converted into digital information. Now, unlock refers to signals, information is to be represented as variable quantities like that we convert from unlock signal to digital converters once we have unlocked to digital conversion at the receiver end of the converters we require once again to detect the signal in digital form it will be symbols or codes we have to decode it detect it and then assimilate it into such that we get once again the continuous value referred as analog value. So that's the reason why we need digital to unlock converters. In the electronics world, un, uh, in the shortcut, with, uh, most of the people call unlock to digital converters as ADC, whereas digital to unlock converters as DAC. Keep it in mind, please. Next, other than this, in this video, I would like to put a focus on a few more important components other than what we have seen, like uh, resistor, capacitor, inductor, and transistor, all those things. We have some more special components available in this so-called electronic, electronic basics. Very first one is light dependent resistor, most famously known as LDR. It is a type of variable resistors, but it is most of the times controlled by the light versus a knob there. You can see the picture there, how it looks like. The resistance in this so-called entire circuit where we are using LDR, it depends entirely on the intensity of the light that is focusing onto the LDR. Now, these so-called LDRs are most of the times available at the exterior of a circuit. They automatically go for turn or off. At during the morning times like that this LDR very useful when whenever we have the light focus in most of the systems where we use the 
street lights in the stock of systems LDRs are most preferably used in the applications. Next one, the light emitting diode. In this one, very famous one, LEDs. Now all of us know it. A light emitting diode is just like a standard diode. The only thing in the change is that here, the electrical current flows only in one direction. Whereas here, the LED used to emit light whenever the electricity is tend to flow through it, flow through it. Now, inside the LED, two components are available, uh, sorry, rather than two components, we can say two if elements are available, we call them as anode and cathode. Now, in this one, we should be careful that, and we should know that current always flows from anode, that is the positive to the cathode negative, and it will never go in the opposite direction, okay? How to identify which is positive and negative in a LED? This is the biggest question they come. In the LED, we can see there are two legs available there. Whichever the leg is a longer one, that is referred as an anode or positive side of a positive side of a LED. Next one, relay. The relays are some sort of components mostly used in all the circuitries to have the main operation of, uh, let me say in simple words, what uh, we, uh, we, shall, we shall have a clarity here. Relay is an called as a type of switch they used in the in the in the beginning they used in the telegraph circuits as a signal repeaters means they are used as the signal repeaters in the circuitry such that they transmit from one to the another circuit that is how the relay relays, relays has come into the field and the next is integrated circuit. An integrated circuit actually is reduced into size. We have a big amount of circuits. They are going to be dumped into this one. So chips are available as shown, shown on the picture here into a tiny chip. These circuit or this chip contains electronic components such as resistors, capacitors, but all of them are available in a smaller scale. Now, if you go to any simple laboratory or any electronic shop to purchase some IC, they come in various differentiation, various, uh, very, various so-called specifications, such as triple five timers, 741 app amps, voltage regulators, microcontrollers, and many more. Now, you can see the legs there, legs of the IC on the screen. They, they are called as pin. Each pin on IC is always unique. They have their own functioning capabilities and characteristics that has to be understood clearly with the help of their schematic diagram only. This is how we can come to a conclusion of basic electronics. I hope this so-called basic electronics has uh, a presentation has been helped you in understanding what is what is meant by electronics. What are the main components starting from resistor, capacitor to inductor and what are the main parameters we have to study? What is transistor and then what, register, what is meant by microprocessor unit? What is meant by microcontroller unit? Similarly like that, what are the special components available? Mm, what are the type of regulators? What are the type of converters? Like these, these are the very basic things that every beginner must know while entering the electronics field such that 
the basics which were discussed in the beginning of the type of subjects will be helpful for you for all your semesters such that what is big circuit you get you will be able to clearly solve the any problems arising in them and most of the times the practical approach towards these circuits is more appreciable than the only theoretical discussion i request you to the students mainly who are watching this one to kindly better to go to any laboratory or any place of your university try to do a small electronic project on your own there are so many electronic projects available on the in the market and in the websites so many websites also try to look for those projects and do your small projects as that you will be well aware with the functioning abilities of each and every component that has been discussed in this video thank you for listening to our videos i request you to kindly share like and subscribe our channel and encourage us to prepare more videos and most of the times we don't use the copyrighted images in the images or copyrighted circuit diagrams in our powerpoint presentations or in our videos such that we avoid the copyright problems thank you for listening